2319. I repeat, we have a 2319. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Finding Disney, where we're finding the Disney magic at home. And today is February 3rd, 2019, 2319, 2319, which of course is in reference to Monsters, Inc. When George Stand Sanderson comes out with the sock on his back. I'm sure you've seen on Pinterest before those laundry boards. We're gonna start out with this board here. Um, this has already had varnish on it. I think it's kind of pretty, but we're gonna paint it anyway, but the back will look really nice anyway. But um, have you seen where it says uh, things like, you know, uh, trying to find its soulmate, you know, and they have the clothespins and you put the socks on it that only have the one that you can find. And until you find its soulmate, you pick off the other pair, but we're gonna put, we have a 2319 on our board, and um, I think this is really cute, and I wanna show you how we're gonna make it. I have these super spongy paint brushes, which I think is gonna add a nice texture. Um, since George Sanderson is a monster, we wanna add as much texture, I think, to the board as we should, or as we can. And so I'm gonna dip it in this yellow paint. I've just picked a nice pale yellow. I actually pulled up a picture of George and um, just to kind of match his colors. I say George like we're best friends or something. Just be kind of whimsical with this because like I said, he's a monster and he's gotta have a lot of texture. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint right down the front of this board. Do you guys have any idea why it's a 2319? I'll give you a minute to guess. <laughs> Well, what I read was that a 2319 is a white sock. W is the 23rd letter in the alphabet, and the S is the 19th letter in the alphabet. So, thus, 2319. If you haven't seen that scene before, if you haven't watched Mo Monsters, Inc. before, um, after this video, go out and do that. You need to. Monsters, Inc. is one of the best Disney movies, I think. It's so creative. The first time I watched it, I just couldn't believe how creative it was. And I shouldn't be surprised, because Disney does it right every time. All right, so I'm just gonna finish painting this. So, so far we've established two things. I needed to paint a yellow stripe, and George and I are best friends. So, <laughs> do you know what the next color is that's going to be on my little sock plaque here? You know what color George is? Hmm. He's orange. So, I have this really nice orange color. It's actually called a uh, spiced carrot, if you want to do this project on your own. I'm sure any yellow and orange will do, but I use spiced carrot and also pale daffodil. How creative. Very creative name. So now I'm going to put orange up here and orange down here using the same technique with my um, spongy brush. And I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see this, but I did leave a little texture. I don't know, it's kind of hard to see because really all I'm seeing is the grains of wood. But I did try to leave a little texture with the paint to make it look more furry-like. So now, like I said, let's do the orange. Don't try to be too precise when you're painting, when you're doing a project like this. It's supposed to be fun and whimsical. It's supposed to look kind of furry and hairy, just like the fur on George Sanderson. We'll put in happy little fur, happy little fur. I'll channel my inner Bob Ross. <laughs> I've been seeing all kinds of Bob Ross stuff lately. I don't know what the deal is with that, but I mean, it's funny. I used to watch Bob Ross when I was a kid, like, if I stayed home from school, sick maybe, or, or just on a regular rainy day or something, I'd be watching Bob Ross on PBS. Oh, I loved him. I really did. And so that's what it's kind of funny is seeing all this Bob Ross stuff. I actually bought my brother-in-law a Bob Ross t-shirt. Uh, too funny. Too funny. Leave in the comments below if you're a big Bob Ross fan. Okay, I'm done painting my board. I'm gonna try to tip it forward a little bit so you can see all the brush strokes I put in there. I took a finer tipped paintbrush and made it so it was kind of furry. Did I need to do that? No, but I'm sort of psycho when it comes to crafts. I have to have them perfect, I tell you, perfect. So yes, now we need to let this fully dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, moving right along to our next step, I have cut out a sock shape. 
I have tried to make it look just like the sock that was found on George's back. If you look really closely in the movie, which I did, I looked it up on YouTube, you can see that these little pinky purpley flowers were painted at the very top of the sock. So that's what I have done here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue this to my board. I also have letters that I have cut out of paper and I've painted them black. I'm gonna put, we have a 23 and I'm, or we have a, and then I'm going to paint 2319 free-handed. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, there are so many options out there of buying stickers or even the little wood pieces or foam or whatever you'd like. I'm going to finish this with a clear coat. So using foam or paper or whatnot is going to be just fine because this clear coat, clear coat, clear goat? <laughs> The clear coat is going to give it a nice finishing touch and keep it protected and keep that paper or wood or whatever you're using from peeling off your board. So, moving on. Moving on with my clear coat, okay. <laughs> All right, I have my letters glued on and like I told you before, I am going to freehand my numbers and I just wanted to give you a little tip about how I center my numbers or if I'm freehanding something. I count how many letters are above here, I count, and then I count, I like put my number, I'm gonna put my numbers in the in-between spaces. So I have nine letters and then I have four numbers. So I'm gonna put one number approximately here, one here and one here and one here, and then it'll be completely centered. If that made any sense to you, <laughs> <laughs> Give me a virtual high five. But yeah, I count my letters and my spaces and then that's how I decide where I'm gonna put things. So this is the weirdest explanation and okay, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I have my numbers placed where I want them and now I'm just gonna take my paint and just kind of make them a little thicker and I'm also gonna put a little edge on them I think it really just cleans it up and what I mean by edge is I'm gonna take my paintbrush and put a little swipe here just like my letters up top just like my letters up top super cute here we go. That looks really cute and it just gives it a finishing touch. I think I am going to make them a little thicker though. What do you guys think? Pretty cute? It kind of looks like pies. <laughs> we have pies. I know it's not gonna be backwards on the video, but it's funny. I like that I did my numbers myself. I think it just adds a little bit more of a personal touch. Now I'm gonna take and hot glue clothespins all across the bottom to clip the socks that don't have a partner. I know you can't see on here, but I actually took a ruler and I measured out how far apart in my um, clips are gonna be. They're gonna be two inches apart. This board is 12 inches long. So I took the center point at six inches and then measured two inches out from there because I don't want my closed pins to be like randomly placed. But unless you want that, then that's your discretion. But now that I've measured this, I can see the little notches where I'm gonna glue and that's what I'm going to do. I think it would be cute if you decided to paint these black or another thing I thought of was to write my family's name on them one at a time, you know, write their name on the top here. So that way I would know, like I could clip that person's sock to that person's clip. But then the only problem I have with that, what if it's like, you know, oh, hey, there goes my glue gun. What if it's the same person that has a sock, then it's like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, do I clip the other person's sock to the other person's name? I mean, these are the thoughts I have, people. Friends, here is the final product. I am so pleased with how it turned out. 
You have the little sock there that's representing the 2319, and I hung a sock here so you can see what this is used for. I even am really pleased with the brush strokes that came through from the varnish. I think it really makes it look like fur. I love this. I think my kids are gonna love it, and I'm just totally pleased. I didn't end up showing you that I did spray the plaque with the clear coat because I think it's going to just protect everything a little bit better. I didn't think I need to show you that step, but I want to show you some other crafts that I thought were really cool on Pinterest. They were not my ideas, but I do want to share them with you just in case you're feeling like you could use this technique on a t-shirt or a bag. And I just wanted to show you some photos of that. I think it's really cool. And I think you guys are going to be inspired to do a craft like this isn't this darling this would be so easy to do for a halloween t-shirt or whatever or just wearing it to the parks and the same with this bag i think it is just absolutely so much fun as always thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again really soon for a new video bye disney fans